All right. Hello, gentlemen. I hope everyone is doing quite well. It is another day in Oz. Another day in Hollywood on Isolation Boulevard. Hope everyone's doing quite well. This week's episode with Mark Metry had dropped. Um, Mark is the author of of Screw Being Shy and the host of Humans 2.0. And I don't know how familiar you guys are with Mark, but Mark is a he's a young man. He is uh, he's a young man. He's 22. He was making six figures at close to uh, uh, being a, t- a teenager, 16, 17 years old. And, um, you know, it, Mark's an interesting guy. Um, he, I guess, so I don't know much about games, but he made his first million selling a a Minecraft server. I'm not really sure what, what that is, but um, I guess it's where a bunch of people conjugate to play games. And Mark had found himself in trouble and he found himself in a, an interesting predicament. And this is one that I've talked about on the show before, which is when you have success early, and you haven't went through a grind to earn it. It's difficult to have a perspective on, 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 on the money that you've gotten and then how that affects you. Like for instance, you know, Mark was very unhappy with himself and life at, at a very early age, at 18, 19 years old. And he found himself so unhappy that he began eating a a ton. He was overweight, he was obese, he was incredibly crippling depression, and he had extreme social anxiety, but yet was killing it, making over six figures. And and he's looking around at his friends and he sees that he's extremely successful and none of them are, but yet he's incredibly unhappy. So the result was that he felt that, that there was something wrong with him, that he was broken. The reality is that though he was a smart man, he was a smart young man, he he got a bit lucky in the gaming space, uh, but because his issue was social anxiety, he had felt disconnected and isolated. And the only place that he had found connection was through the internet. And that's, that's a difficult spot to be in. And because he, fell, he found sanctuary in the internet and a sanctuary gaming away from everyone, it only drove his social anxiety uh, to a, a farther place of isolation. And what did he do? He f- continued to fuel that not feeling very well with food, with junk food. And what did that do? That only perpetuated the anxiety and the depression until he found himself in a place where he wanted to die, he wanted to kill himself, he thought he was broken. And one of the key components that we speak about on the show all the time, I hear you, Adam. Yeah, I, you know, I, I think we, a lot of people have to battle with that. This is, everyone has their cross, to, everyone has that, that battle. Uh, for Mark, he mentioned that upon one of his walks where that was his thing, he would, he would walk the most dangerous streets that he can find in Boston, hoping that something would happen to him. That's a, 
awful, awful place to be. But on one of his walks, he was listening to Tim Ferriss. And Tim Ferriss just happened to have a guest or uh, was doing a podcast and it spoke and it spoke to Mark that, that he could get out of this. And so began his venture in the self development and moving into to the first place of it, which is, which is eating right. And once Mark started eating right, he started to feel better. So then once he started to feel better, he started to exercise. Excuse me, guys. He started to feel better. And once he started to feel better, he started to eat better. He started to exercise. Then once he started to exercise, he started sleeping well. And so now he's reversed the spinning of the wheel. This is why I say there's a train that is barreling down the tracks. And every time that you supply it, you fuel it with what it needs. If it's going in the wrong direction, so you fuel it with junk food, you'll fuel it with, with b bad sleeping and laziness and uh, uh, f influence it with bad uh, negativity and everything that just fuels that train barreling down the tracks in the wrong direction. Once Mark decided to start eating better, he slowly started to stop the train. It came to a halt and then was able to start fueling it in the other direction with positivity, eating well, being able to sleep, exercise, and then it starts barreling down the tracks in the other direction. And, and once you can get some momentum going, then you can continue adding to it and fueling it. So, so then Mark went from in a place of, to use one of Adam Newman's words here uh, in the family, his prison in disguise. That's exactly what a comfort zone is. He was able to beat his social anxiety so much so that then began doing public speaking and starting as a, companies that were able to uplift people rather than uh, companies that were causing people to remain in their comfort zone. So think about that. His first company and, and, and ventures were in gaming and building a, a Minecraft server. And that, that perpetuates, you could say that that, that perpetuates negativity or uh, it can be a place where people will find sanctuary to feel comfortable with and escape all the negativity that they're feeling on themselves. But once he got the, the train going in the other direction, feeling good, getting better, working on himself, it was that he wanted to do other businesses. His whole business, his podcast human 2.0 is to uplift people rather than giving people an escape so not only did his habits begin to change his outlook it also changed what he wanted to be doing for his life sorry guys i was putting on that other pot of coffee So it is those things that, that it's the little steps that are going to allow us all to get there. And certainly in this time of where we're at right now, um, it is important to keep up any sort of routines that feed the train moving in the other direction. And that's, that can be difficult. I know that for a few weeks ago, uh, when this all started going down, that first week was insane. So much incredible bad stuff was going on that it just, 
it was it was so heavy. It was difficult. I didn't want to get up. I felt beat up every day of the anxiety and the emotions that I was feeling. So, <clears throat> um, but now that everything is leveled out, it's a little bit easier to just now that I'm in a, things have mellowed. We're in a routine. I'm in a routine. Back to my routine, at least is as as it, as it can be in this time of crisis. Things have settled down. We're waiting out a few a few things. This week is very telling of all the people who are sick, how bad of a situation we're in. Hopefully, to hope for the best, I hope that um, everyone, the hospitals are not overwhelmed and we acted uh, fast and and perhaps uh, so fast that that we're in a good spot. Unfortunately, it looks like New York has been hit rather hard um, and they're a little bit ahead of us. And so I'm a little bit worried on, on that front, but that's that's where we are. Guys, if you have any questions or comments, uh, put them in the comments below. I'd love to hear how everybody's doing. I'm gonna give some highs. Hank, how you doing buddy? Adam Newman, welcome. Jake Gilhard, how you doing buddy? I hope you're doing well. Alex George, thanks for tuning in again. Matthew Sturgis. Hello, Jason Longbow. Andy Sakuraba, thank you for joining us once again. You're always here, my man. Jeff Malin, I hope you're doing well. Jose, right on. Sebastian Karg, and Ken, right on, buddy. I saw your comment earlier. You said that work was now, uh, has been crazy and you had to put self-development much on hold. I know we've talked about that. Um, we should, uh, hopefully you have some plans moving forward now that that's getting a bit settled, um, considering what what we're dealing with at the moment. Uh, hopefully you can find those opportunities. Austin, I hope you're doing well out in Utah. So that's right on. Eric Neal, welcome. So uh, if you haven't been able to check out that episode, I highly recommend it. Mark was wonderful. And here's my part about going into it, speaking with Mark, I, at 22, he's already done so much in his life that I, I was, I really wondered how much he actually got it, how much he actually fought through in order to, to see himself as a human 2.0. Because I know for myself, I had to go well into my 20s into some dumb paths in order to find a way out or know that uh, the path that I was going to was the wrong one. The train was barreling down the wrong track. And I, I knew that I was ready to make a decision and changing course. So I told Mark at the beginning of the show, I said, I hope you don't mind but because of your age, I am going to push back on you a little bit because I want to, I, I want to challenge uh, some of the things you have to say because of your age. However, and 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 the reason being is we had not gotten a copy of his book. Uh, it was a little bit late to us, and and so. I didn't have a full opportunity to get really into his story. And it was only on that call that I recognized just how far uh, into his own prison he had went into his own hell. And, uh, and I think it, it, it was apparent to me on the podcast. So I hope it's apparent to you guys. And I know that when I mentioned that we were going to be talking to Mark, a couple people wrote me because they're fans of his show, Humans 2.0. And what was also great about it is Mark was a big fan of The Art of Charm. So, uh, and we're going to be going on his show in a few weeks. So I'm looking forward to that. Uh, all right. Any of you guys have any questions or comments? I would love to hear how everyone's doing. Why don't you put that in the comments? Let me let me know. Um, comfort zones can be prison in disguise. 
Adam, that's so profound. I mean, absolutely. Um, we don't know the, how the environment we're in, how toxic it can be because it has certain elements that allow us to feel good in that moment. Uh, Austin Rose says, Hey Johnny, on the topic of maintaining social connection, what are some suggestions on how we can do that while maintaining social distancing for myself? Utah had an earthquake along with the virus and it seems going out in public is highly discouraged. Well, yes, absolutely it is, but that doesn't mean that you can't connect them connecting with all you right now. Uh, use Zoom, use Google Hangout, reach out to people. I can't tell you guys all the new people that I have spoken to in the last two weeks, uh, especially my social media platform of choice is Twitter. Uh, and because of that, there we go. So, and because of that, um, I've, I've met a lot of people on Twitter. Twitter's really easy for, for myself. Um, I tend to be there a lot. I interact with a lot of people. People tend to write each other. Um, and they, one of the things that makes Twitter fun is you build alliances with people, uh, connections in which you help each other out. The more people you connect with and help, the more they help you. And so the idea of giving value and, and connecting and helping others helps you and Twitter. And so because of that, people reach out, they want to talk to you, uh, they want to hear your story. I, I don't know if you guys follow me on Twitter, but I have a personal, AOC Johnny, and then of course I run the Art of Charm Twitter. But at the same time, uh, at, the, at the same time, I'm also uh, <clears throat> been going on other shows, I've been going into other people's networks, I've been doing a lot of work with those folks there and it's been a lot of fun. So Austin, you know, as an exercise, start reaching out to people. Everyone that you follow as a content creator, whether it's YouTube, Facebook, whatever your preferred method is, reach out to them, write them a, a, a letter. But here's the thing, if you write Joe Rogan an email or write him on Instagram, he's not gonna reply. It's the little people who will take time out to reply to you, who will write you, who will thank you for your support. When I get those letters, that makes me extremely happy. It's new relationships. It shows that, that the work that I've been putting in is paying off, that people are, are noticing. But we only notice if you write us. So, you know, as something fun to do, Austin, is write five small content creators that you like, whose blogs that you like, whose tweets that you like. Um, You'd be surprised how many people will write back and ask you what you're up to and, and how things are going for you. I do this with, with everyone that writes me. Uh, and, at the, and if I can, I try to uh, work together with them in some sort of capacity. I ask them what they're up to, what do they do, do they have a Twitter, what is their social media. Um, so, and Austin, check this out. When I started with the Art of Charm Twitter, um, we've had it running since 09, but we've only used it as an opportunity to promote the show. Hey, new episode out. Hey, new episode out. Uh, here's a new article. We didn't interact with people on Twitter. We weren't, we wasn't a Twitter company. So I got engaged with it in order to help build our audience. And what I did was I wrote about, I don't know, that week I must have wrote to 20 to 30 small um, Twitter profiles that I enjoyed, whose, whose tweets resonated with me that I liked. And I wrote them and I wrote all the same thing. I said, hey, my name is AOC Johnny. I gave him my personal Twitter. I am running the, the Art of Charm account. 
I really enjoy your tweets. You'll probably see me interacting with them. I've already shared some. Uh, I just wanted to introduce myself because you'll be seeing me engage. If there's anything that I can do to help you, let me know. And I sent that message to like 20 or 30. I can't remember. It was a lot. Uh, and that's how I started meeting other Twitter accounts. I got involved in some Twitter groups where you help each other grow and, and things like that. And it was from those <clears throat> early messages and from me interacting with their work. So I would do it like this, interact with their stuff for about a week and then write everybody because they'll be a, they'll start seeing your name around and then once they start seeing your your name around sharing retweeting uh, uh, interacting with their engaging in their stuff and then <clears throat> when you write them they're like oh that's that's Austin I right? have been seeing his tweets around that's how I did it on Twitter but you can do it on uh, anything blogs you could comment on uh, Instagram, of course. So that's an opportunity to reach out and start meeting and building uh, new connections. And right now, what else do you have to do other than work on new skills, new things, learning social media? Uh, that's all. That's all. That's all good stuff. And so that's what I've been doing. And I. I've been trying to do more periscopes going live on on Twitter. Um, I'm going to try to do more on Instagram as well. I'm trying to do those before I come into the groups and talk to you guys. So speaking of which, I'm already 25 minutes into this and I just wanted to drop in, say hello. If anyone else has got anything to say, I'd love to hear it. Oh, okay. Let's see. Uh, Jonathan Lee. Uh, just got the last few minutes in. Tension is always needed to build muscle and to grow. Without tension, there isn't growth. I gotta say, absolutely. And what we're dealing with right now is certainly a lot of, is a lot of tension. And this is history. And you, unfortunately, you know, we, we can't do anything about this situation except stay home. Never have we been asked to do so little for so many. I really enjoyed it. I don't know. I posted it on Facebook, not to say that I came up with it, but uh, maybe I saw it somewhere, but that's a beautiful phrase. Never in the history of the world have we been asked to do so little for so many. So, and, and it is in, within that confinement that you're going to be adding the content to your character, painting it in, asking yourself, you know, who are you in a time of crisis? Do you just fold up into bed and, and not get out and hope for all this to be over soon? Or do you get to work on yourself? On a totally different note, I had a plan of coming to LA for a month in mid-June for work and to see the new place. Hope that is still possible. Well, buddy, I say, uh, I, won't, I don't see why not. So just hit us up, let us know. Uh, hopefully that also goes as planned. All right, Andy, let's see. I did a positivity checkpoint post yesterday to my friends to have my friends think about what's happening during their time at home. It's nice seeing their responses. There you go, Austin, there's another one. That's, uh, that's great, Andy, and I hope uh, everyone is, is doing quite well. It is, it is important, and oh, to Austin, to go along with your idea of, of, of being stuck in this social distancing, I, there was a post, uh, I believe it was the World Health Organization wants to change those terms, because that perspective of social distancing is different than physical distancing. And that's important. And perspective is all important. I don't know if you guys followed me in the, the lives I did last week, but I changed. I was talking about 
for two weeks that I was doing prison workouts at home. I had to change the name of them because that perspective of a prison workout, though it was humorous at first, was not was not doing me justice as things were getting settled in. So I changed my workouts to gratitude workouts. And, and I changed them to gratitude workouts because there are many people who are on, there are many people who are, are not in the position that I am in and they're unable to work. They're unable to work out even. And I, I have to be thankful of that position and I want to have a good outlook on the next few weeks. And if I continue to call it a prison workout, that's not going to help my perspective. So I changed it to a gratitude workout. So now every morning I post my gratitude workout to remind me that I need to be thankful in this time and keep that perspective. Uh, Joseph, Simon, how you doing, buddy? And so the new world, uh, the World Health Organization, they changed their name for from social distancing to physical distancing. Same reason. It's all how you view it. And the words that you use frame up the ideas and the beliefs that, that you're going to go into the world with. And those words are extremely important. You know, as I said, the prison workout thing, well, that was funny for a week, but after getting into the second week and then realizing that there was more to come, that's not a very good view. That's not a very good perspective that was going to help me get through this. So yes, humorous, it worked for a little bit, but then things were starting to get real and I needed to change the name. So I changed it to gratitude workout. And, and I was happy to see that the World Health Organization changed it from social distancing to physical distancing. Yes, Joseph, it is good to hear from you. All right, guys. So I'm going to get if, if you guys got a, a question or a comment, throw it up. I would love to hear how things are going. If not, I'm going to head out. Uh, Austin says, awesome. That was exactly what I needed. Thanks, Johnny. Well, well, good, Austin. And guys, if you need anything, you need to chat with anybody, just hit me up in the chat on the network or on my Facebook. You guys all have that stuff. And then with that, I'm going to head out. I have plenty of stuff to do today as it's Monday. And uh, I will see you guys this week. Uh, and then in the, in the network, Michael's going to be going live tomorrow, guys, uh, at 9. And plenty of good stuff going on here. So I'll see you guys later. Cheers. You have a good one.